Yellow fever is a viral infection spread to humans through a bite from a mosquito carrying the virus. As such, the yellow fever vaccination certificate is a requirement for international travels from Uganda. About 84 private medical facilities are licensed to provide yellow fever vaccination services across the country, supplementing government facilities. These private medical facilities are accredited under the yellow fever vaccination centers. However, on 5th September this year, they woke up to reports that the yellow fever vaccination system had changed and a new Association of Externalization of Labor Health Units, in short, Ayeru, had been developed to cap down fraud. <laughs> Later, it emerged that only 16 out of the 84 licensed private facilities were selected and granted access to the new system to be sole providers of the yellow fever vaccination service countrywide. I don't know the criteria they used, but they were the people that were selected. Following several engagements, a few more members were granted access to the system, bringing the number to 21 accredited members. However, each service provider was required to pay a subscription fee of 200,000 shillings. Before the new system, yellow fever service providers were only required to buy vaccination yellow books from the Ministry of Health as well as the vaccine itself. So people were forced to pay the 200,000 because it was a directive from the Ministry of Health, our mother body and uh, the governing office, the president's office. With the new IRU system, the yellow vaccination cards were to come with QR codes, leading to an extra fee of 20,000 shillings to enable the online activation of each vaccination book. I'm going to give an example. If Mr. Charles came and vaccinated anywhere, I was expected to remit an extra 20,000 to IRU in order for that person to pass at the airport. However, the new system has resulted in several loopholes. It is alleged that authorities managing the system do not approve any number less than 50. The starting point of tokens is 1 million, meaning if you have two girls to vaccinate, you have to first put a million on the phone, they take it off, then you are allowed to vaccinate. Uh, when you look at Ministry of Health, every day they release around 2,000 books in circulation, meaning if 2,000 people are vaccinated or 2,000 books are used, for instance, I'm saying, this is times 20,000. That is 40 million that these people are making in a day. The other loophole is to do with who manages the system and where the token fee of 20,000 per person vaccinated goes. Several members told us that two companies, namely Iotech Limited and Eamon Services SMC Limited, receive the vaccination token fees and later remit funds to Ayeru. When you put the one million on the phone, you initiate, then it is taken off, off by Iotech and Erimon. Uh, when I look into my books of accounts, I realize that in just four months, just four months, I have remitted over 30 million. To a they also told us of mobile phone accounts to which money is sent whenever the system is down. They say the number displays Florence Chinji Nachuala upon sending money on it. Since the inception of the system, some members of accredited yellow fever vaccination centers thought that it was a government initiative. However, they soon found out from the Uganda Registration Service Bureau that the Ayeru company actually belongs to a private entity and the funds ended up in hands of private individuals. A search was also made with URSB regarding Iotech Limited and Eamon Services SMC Limited, the companies collecting fees on behalf of Ayeru and the findings revealed. Consequently, the medical practitioners are now petitioning several government offices, including the President's Office, Minister of Health, the Speaker of Parliament, the State House and Corruption Unit, to look into the matter. We went to various ministries seeking out clarification. Uh, many facilities started getting threats of human trafficking. In my mind, I'm thinking, how does a clinic giving out yellow fever deal with human trafficking in the first place? When contacted on phone, the Minister of Health spokesperson Emmanuel Aineviona admitted that the Ministry was aware of the online system and the petition, but had not sanctioned any players to pay into the system. The Ministry did not sanction any form of payment by the players, but uh, the Office of the Director General received the, the petition of excluding some of the players of which he will respond and uh, we will be able to meet all the players involved.
Patrick Senyondo, NTV.